All right, it is MTG Buddha back again. Um, today is the first day you can do Dominaria. Uh, we're going to start out by going in. I bought both of the packs like I said I was going to. So we're going to open some Dominaria United packs. And I think I'm going to start out by opening a few just single packs instead of doing the by 10. Um, just so I can kind of get a little better look at some of the cards. So Timeless Lotus, that's pretty cool. Um, let's see. This will definitely go into some Brawl decks. Because I, I really want to build a Joda deck for Brawl. Uh, if you're not familiar with Joda, Joda is the one that... Uh, he's the new uh, Wooberg Legendary. So, um, And when you cast a Legendary creature, basically he gives your Legendary creatures Cascade. So it's going to be really interesting to do a Brawl deck for. So I'm going to want to build that at some point. We're going to need these lands, so that's good. Let's see what else we get here. Anything interesting in the rare spot? That's a decent rare. I actually like that rare. Um, I like the fact that when you play it, if you kick it, it deals damage. Uh, for each time you kick it, it deals two damage. So you can deal four damage uh, to any target when you kick it, if you kick it twice. So if you're playing Mardu. Um, and the fact that the creature has life link, the creature is the one dealing the damage. So you also get to gain life when you kick it. So that's pretty cool. I like that. So we'll open the first seven packs, I guess. Uh, so this is another one that could be interesting to do as a commander. So, and then we'll do by 10 after that. I just wanted to open a few. Just kind of get them open and get a little better look at all the parts. Because when you do by 10, I think it just shows you your rares. It doesn't show you any of the other stuff. So I think this is an interesting card. Um, for, especially for limited. A lot of times these cards um, will enter the battlefield tapped. Or if they when they enter the middle of battlefield, you have to pay one or what have you. The fact that this enters the battlefield and you get to scry one. Um, you do have to, to filter mana to go into it, but still, the fact that you get to scry one and you don't have to pay one like you usually do, that's pretty interesting. And then this guy seems like he could be pretty good. Um, he's probably going to take the place of the, um, what was the Spellkeeper card from the last, it's, uh, from last standard. Um, it was three mana, but it flew. Um, and it made things cost more. So this is probably going to take the place of that. Let's see. Okay. One more pack and then we'll do by 10. And then we'll do the mythic packs. Oh, Defiler of Eagler. Nice. This is the Defiler that I'm most interested to play. Um, he makes me kind of want to do something with, in standard with uh, four copies of him. So, yeah. That could be interesting. Alright, so now we'll go by 10. Just to get through the rest of these. All right, so we got a mythic one here. We got a, a Jaya. Nice. So that adds to my collection for Jaya. Uh, there's another one of the uh, Defilers. Frayed seems interesting. This is a pretty cool card. Um, yeah, this will definitely be going into the Jota build. The Jota or Jora? I think it's Jota. Um, let's see. Yeah, this is cool. Definitely going to want to try something with that card. Um, oh yeah, that's Shiver Devastator. That seems fun. Alright, let's open 10 more. I figured doing it, doing the, the thing for the packs this time. I had never done the packs before. Um, uh, but I figured since I've been playing a lot more Constructed, that getting the packs would get me a lot of the way and I wouldn't have to worry about using a lot of my um oh, nice we got a lily that's pretty cool that card is just ridiculous so um yeah nice I got one of these I need four of these so maybe we'll get some of those in drafts but I'm going to start out by doing a sealed after I get done opening all these I'm going to do a sealed event and then I might go ahead and do a draft if I have time because I have to go to work tonight. I unfortunately agreed to work tonight, not thinking about today being um, the day that Arena was going to release 
the new set. So, all right, let's see. Let's get these packs open. All right. Well, that was kind of a jip. These are supposed to be mythic packs, and I got a rare wild card. That's stupid. This card seems interesting. Yeah. That is definitely something that will go into a green build for Historic Brawl. There's another Shipping Devastator, and we have a pack of Nuka Pena that I got from the Mastery Pass because you get. Uh, I bought the limited package as well, so I have Mastery Pass from, from that as well. So, yeah, if you see here, I have four draft tokens and a sealed token. So, if we go in and look at the Mastery Pass this time, I haven't looked at it since it just got added today, but um, yeah, so you get the first 10 levels when you buy the package. So, it automatically jumped me up 10 levels and gave me all these. Um, and then, so next we've got get to level 15 and we get another draft token. So, yeah, there's what our pet looks like this time. Is a little goblin. Yeah, so, yeah, looks like pretty normal. Is this another pet? Yeah. Yeah, so it looks, it looks a lot like the last Mastery Pass. So, once you hit 80, it's just uncommon cards. So... But yeah, we're going to try to finish the Mastery Pass this time. I didn't finish the last one. Um, I got pretty close, but I didn't quite finish it. There were a few days where I didn't play as much as I should. So, alright, we're going to go out and we're going to go in and do a sealed first. So let's use the sealed token. And let's open and see what we get. Alright, so our rares. Ooh, Lord of Windrace. That could be interesting. That card seems... Fairly broken if you're able to keep cards in your hand. You see, this card's really good. And this card seems pretty good as well. Hmm. Player may draw an additional card if they do. Spells the cast cost. So this turn costs two more. Okay. Yeah, I don't know if I necessarily want to do that. This is probably not something that we're going to be in for. Now we did get one of the lords, but it's a soldier lord. Okay. So, a lot of times when I'm doing the sealed on here, um, it's, I don't like looking at it in this way. This isn't how I look at things. So, I usually go in and just toss everything in. But, like, I'll move, like, all of the white to one pile and then the blue to another pile and so forth um, just to kind of have the way I would look at it in real life because I would I would put all of my cards out on the table separated by uh, color um, and then I would go through after that and I would get a better idea of what's in my colors, what I have the best of, what I have the worst of, that type of thing. So, but we're going to see if it'll, yeah, so. All right, tell you what, we're going to take all these lands out because I'm not going to need lands right now. We'll figure the lands out later. All right, so I hadn't actually built it, built like this before on here. I had never actually done it the way I usually do in real life. I usually just kind of look through the little thing at the top, but I don't know. I just kind of feel like it'll be easier for me to do if I do it the way I would do it in real life. So, I don't know if there's an easier way to do this, if there's a way to get it down here and then sort. I don't think there is. It'd be nice if they had, like, sort options for for the deck, so if you could change how it was sorted. I think when I used to play on MTGO back in the day, I think they had options where you could sort by, like, you could you could actually put like your creatures in one pile and your spells in another set of piles. You could have it sorted that way. So it's basically sorted the way I would sort it in real life. That's kind of how I'm going to try to sort it this time. Uh, let's go with our multicolors. Looks like we got a lot of duels, and that's nice because duels are going to be pretty important in this set, especially since they have the the basic land types on them. 
So they're going to be pretty important. And I only got two artif well, three artifacts built. So let's get our duels out. All right, there we go. Yeah, it looks like we've already got some styles for a couple of them. All right, so it looks like we have a pretty good amount of dual lands. I wonder how many dual lands I'm going to open in actual packs. Let's see. I wonder if this is representative of how often you find these in regular packs. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten. So in six packs, we've got ten dual lands. If that's the way it is in real life, then, I mean, it should make it pretty easy to be able to go five, four to five colors in a lot of your drafts and sealed. Okay, so the thing I have the most of is red. So that's an obvious indicator that red might be something I want to do. Um, I do have lightning strike. I know I saw lightning strike in here. Um, there's some other stuff. Let's see what my uncommons and stuff, all my multicolors. So this is the one that when you cast spells, you can cast sorceries like Flash. Um, and when it attacks, you can pay two. If you do the next, you copy your next instant or sorcery. Um, Lord Windgrace seems really cool, uh, and he is red to go along with the fact that I have a ton of red stuff. Um, so that could be interesting. Uh, this guy, I like the fact that when you play him, you get to choose two things, and he can flash in, so he can work both as a creature and a combat trick. Um, so you can either counter a spell, activate an ability, or trigger an ability, which is awesome. Except its controller draws a card. Um, but it could be cool. There are some cards, like if I use him in Historic Brawl, there there are some cards that say things like, uh, you, what is the one? There's an enchantment where it has like three options or something, and you have to do each part of it, and the last part is you lose the game. Um, so you could flash him in and counter your own activated ability and draw a card. So that could be interesting for Brawl. Um, but in this more... Most often, this would probably be flashing it into Destroy a Creature or Planeswalker in Limited. Um, let's see, Ivy. So, Ivy's pretty cool. Um, she would let me do some cool things. And if I did play Lord of Wind Grace, I would just be splashing some blue to get to her if I played her. Um, this guy, Baird. Let's see. So, at the beginning of your end step, if you control a creature with power grip. So, basically, if you pop one of your creatures. On your turn, you get a soldier token at the end of your turn. Um, whenever another creature enters the battlefield under your control, you gain one life. Whenever another creature opponent you control dies, each opponent loses one life. Okay, so this makes it to where if you sacrifice stuff, your opponents lose life, and you gain life when you play creatures. So you want to make a lot of tokens and sack tokens with that. So we might try to do something with Lord of Wind Grace. Uh, I don't know. We'll see. Um, let's look through the red first and see. Hammer Hands um, is, would be a card that I'm not real high on playing. Phoenix Chick, I do want to play. So I'm going to make two piles for red to start with. This is going to be the pile that I definitely want to play. This is going to be the maybe pile. Um, let's see. So what's this one do? If it, if the spells kick draw a card, it deals damage to it. Okay. So now this one is worded weird. It always deals damage unless you have zero cards in hand after you play this. If this is the last card in your hand, it's not going to do any damage. But the deal with this one is, the way it's worded, I'm, I'm sure there's going to be people that are going to be like, oh, well, it doesn't do any damage unless I kick it. But no, um, Fires of Victory deals damage to a creature or Planeswalker equal to the number of cards in your hand part is what the spell does. The If this spell is kicked, you draw a card Is the if you pay the kicker cost. So it, it's always going to be two mana to do damage. It's not just going to be two da two mana and then it does nothing. So it's it's kind of worded weird, but they, they wanted to put it that way, I'm pretty sure, because they put the kicker part up top so that you do that first, you draw a card, and then the spell does damage equal to the number after you've drawn the card. So it just kind of makes it seem weird. But... Um, that would be like in the maybe pile. Let's see this one. Uh, this is the one that when it is kicked, you can bounce a creature to its opponent's hand. 
And when you're recasting your sorcery spells, it gets pumped. So that's pretty cool. We'll take that. Um, this is just a, a looter or a rummager, actually. Uh, lightning strike. Love lightning strike. This chick. Um, she could be interesting. I'm not sure. If I'm playing an aggressive deck, she's going to be good. If I'm not playing an aggressive deck. Um, I could see playing probably one smash, but not uh, three. Yeah, I don't know. That's that's in the maybe pile. Um, I could see playing this because I'd want to be able to draw cards. Um, the Flowstone Kabu. Um, he can pump into a 4-1. So, let's see. So, Keldon Strike Team. If it, when it enters the battlefield, if it was kicked, create two 1-1 one, one soldier creature tokens. As long as Keldon Strike Team entered the battlefield this turn, creatures you control have haste. Okay. So, that's probably playable enough. Uh, Black Kicker. So, creatures you control get plus 2, plus 0 until end of turn. Uh, if it was kicked... Whenever a creature you control dies, this turn draw a card. So that's considered could be considered. It's, that's really good if you're going wide. I don't know as though if I do play solo wind grace, how wide I would be going. Um, yeah, that's just a good card. Um, let's see. When it enters the battlefield, it deals damage to each opponent equal to the number of basic land types. Yeah, we definitely take that. That's essentially a creature with a burn spell on top of it, and with all of these, um, with all of these, we're definitely going to be playing multiple land types. So we should be able to get four to five potentially a lot of times out of that. Sacrifice another creature, it deals one damage to any target. Uh, it's a big dummy for the top of the curve, so that, that could be a playable card. Um, and then let's see, the three main colors for him were green, red, and black. So let's look at our green real quick. Um, okay, so this right here, yeah, that's a, a bite spell. We always like bite spells. Uh, this card is going to be really good. I would have liked to have had more than one of this one. But yeah, we're definitely going to take that. Uh, let's see. So this badger, it's got a kicker of black, which if we do play something built around Lord of Wind Grace, then uh, we would be playing black, so it would be easy to kick. So, enters the battlefield. If it's kicked, creatures you control gain menace. So, that's actually pretty good. So, for four mana, I could give all my creatures menace. In a board stall, that would be really great. And I have three of those. So, yeah, that's... Enter it's a 3-3 three, three for three. If not, I mean... All right. So, yeah. So, this we would want. Uh, it's a mana ramper that has death touch as well. So, um, let's see. Enters the battlefield. If it's kicked, create a token... It's a copy of a creature you control. That's pretty cool. I like that. That's uh, that's a lot of mana, but still, uh, that's definitely worth considering. Uh, this has ward and it has a list, so that's pretty cool. I like the fact if you look on the art really closely, you can see he's actually got his got a little copy of himself on top of him. I'm guessing it's like his son or something. It's like bring your kid to work day. Yeah, that's pretty cool. So, uh, that's playable. This card is definitely playable. Uh, it gets power and toughness equal to the, double the number of basic land types you have. So it can be a 10, 10 for five, uh, if I'm playing all five colors. Yeah, that's pretty cool. And it checks constantly. It doesn't just check when it enters the battlefield. So that's, so if I play him and I only have three out, he's a six, six, but then if I play another type, he becomes an eight, eight and so forth. So. Uh, it can't be bought by creature power to us. Yeah. Okay. So basically, all of our green cards are what I would consider playable. Uh, let's look at our black. Let's see. So target creature gains death touch. Uh, that would be a maybe type spell. Um, let's see. Your opponent can't gain life. That's good. Um, and you can pump it and give it plus one plus one. That's definitely playable. At a two drop spot. Um, whenever a creature you control dies, scribe one. That's definitely playable at the two drop spot as well. Um, target opponent reveals their hand. You choose another card from it. The player discards it. That's playable. Um, when it dies, target creature and opponent controls gets minus one, minus one. Yeah, I'd definitely play that. 
Um, let's see, Defender, Sacrifice a Creature you control, gain one life, draw a card. It's worth putting in the deck, I guess. It's a 3 mana 2 4 that defends with top X cards of your library where X is the number of base clan types you control. You may put two of them in your hand. The rest only. Uh, if I'm playing five color, four to five colors that of lands, that would be good. Let's see, this one's just a kill spell, so obvious I play that. Okay, so creatures you control. Um, so it costs one less for each creature in my graveyard. That's playable. So I think my green is my green might actually be my strongest color. My green and black of those three colors. Let's see what my blue looks like. Okay, so this is a going to the maybe pile with the other stuff. Um, let's see. So her. Enters the battlefield with two plus one plus one counters. You kicked it, so it can be a five mana three three. That would be possible if I was playing that. Let's see, so if I was playing this, that would I think that would make the cut because one mana you just bounce a creature or planeswalker, and then if you pay the four mana, you get to put it on the bottom of the library. So that's playable. Um. Let's see, I have creature blocks this turn if able. Um, I mean, that's decent. It's not the greatest, but Essence Scatter is another okay. Let's see. Can't be blocked as long as you have cast it as your sorcery this turn. That would be an okay card. This card, I just, I'm not real fond of this card. I don't like the idea of being able to let my opponent draw cards. Even if it does make their stuff cost two more. Because later in the game, like that that's not really that much of a downside um that's playable enters the battlefield with the top x cards of your library where x is number of basic land types among things you control uh put one of them on top of your library okay so it just basically puts it on top of my library it doesn't let me draw it if it let me draw it i would be down for that but uh and then we got two just straight up counter spells cost one blue less if an opponent has cast two or more spells. So if it's my opponent's second spell, I can do it for just one in a blue. That's pretty cool. I like that. Um, I don't know. This, I'm not sure what I want to do. I'll tell you what. We're going to just kind of give a quick look through on these. Not seeing anything through here that makes me go, ooh, that's awesome. I have to do that. And then, let's see, so I've looked at the other colors. Alright, so let's see what kind of creature types we have. What's our shoulder count? Our shoulder count is only at 5. We have 13 humans. Yeah, I don't see anything other than human that looks like a ridiculously high number. So, I tell you what, alright. So, we're going to go through and pop all these out. And we're going to leave. And we'll go back in and just build with we'll build around Lord of Wind Grace first to see how that turns out. We'll probably wind up splashing some blue because uh, I have a couple kicker costs in those that I'm going to want to play. So, yeah, so when I build in real life, I, I basically do this, I, except I don't have to do it like this because I just take the um, the piles and move them over and then I just look at the ones that I... I the piles that I thought I was going to like. So I'll tell you what, we'll start with the multicolor and go back here and get Lord of Wind Grace because I think I definitely want to play him. And then depending on how, if I am going to splash blue, depending on how many um, ways I have to make blue and how many spells I have that target, I may wind up playing Ivy Gleeful Spell Thief because she's pretty cool. So I have one card here that could go in and give me green and blue. So I would need to be splashing blue. This would give me red and blue. So that would be a way to splash. So I have two. Um, let's see. That one. I have two of those. So three, four. Yeah, so I have a lot of ways to splash the blue. So I will probably go ahead and we'll go ahead and just put her in the deck. Because I think I am gonna try to splash her. So we'll go. We definitely want the red and green because red and green is in Soul Wind Grace's cost anyway. Um, red and black is in his costs. We'll do the red and blue so that we can splash her easier. We'll do both of those. Um, and, you know, I might just toss in this black-white one. 
and this green white one just so that I can have all five types because I do have things that want me to do the types. So let's look at our kicker spells in those colors first. So Fires of Victory is definitely going to, it's just a burn spell. This is a good card. Um, that's potential, but I don't know. We're not, I'm not sure yet on that one. Definitely Vine Saver Prodigy. We're definitely playing all three of those. This, I think we play, even if we're not going to kick it more than likely. Um, since we are splashing blue, we can go ahead and play Etri. And then may play this as well if I splash blue, but it is double blue. So I don't know as though I want to play it for sure. Um, all right, let's go out of there. Let's look at, I know green was my strongest color. It seemed like, so we want this. We definitely want this. We'll take this. We'll take this because it has ward and we'll take the bite spell. So that right now has me at 24, not including the land. So one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine. So, so we'll pull the lands out real quick so I have a better count. All right. So I'm at 15 cards right now. Um, let's go to red. Uh, I do want to play Phoenix Chick. I think Phoenix Chick could be interesting. We're definitely playing Lightning Strike. There's no way I'm not playing Lightning Strike. Um, I'm going to play one Thrill of Possibilities. Um, we'll probably play this Enlist Guy, one copy of him to start. And then I think we deal, we do this one for sure. And then check black and see what we have in black. And then we'll kind of, we won't those two, I know. Um, we definitely want the kill spell. We'll probably take this guy. That would put me at 24 right now. Um, all right, let's look and see what our creature count looks like. We're at 19 creatures, so we could actually cut some creatures. Um, what would I cut? I mean, I guess I could cut one of those. I mean, these all seem really good down here. All right, so let's put our creatures and our spells together, just get a better idea. So this is spell, 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 creature, spell, creature, 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 creature. All right, so let's get better look at what we're actually doing here all right so these are all my creatures so currently we are at what 18 creatures no 17 creatures um i think i might have kicked one of my creatures out by accident is there a creature that i was playing that i kicked out see i know i took one of those out Oh, I accidentally took Solar Wind Grace out. That was dumb. All right, so let's see. So this is a 3-3. Three, three. I didn't look at these. And there's a Battlefield Scry 2. Um, a 1, and you can add one a minute of any color. So basically, he filters. Um, you can only activate it once each turn. Yeah, I don't know as I necessarily want to play that. So, I mean, this is pretty good, I think. Phoenix Chick can't block whenever you attack with three or more creatures. You can pay three, bring it back from the graveyard uh, with a counter on it. Um, let's see. So I do have, let's see. So this has flying. This has menace. This has flying. Um, let's see. This has death touch. Ward, reach, domain, and list, death touch. All right, so I have two flying creatures, two death touch creatures, and a menace creature, which can pump. I like the fact this can pump. That's always pretty good. Um, yeah, so I have a bite spell, which hopefully will kill something, a kill spell, a lightning strike, which hopefully will kill something, and fires of victory, which hopefully can kill something. And then we have a way to draw more cards. I think that's all right. This is a really creature heavy deck, but I think I'm cool with that. So let's go get the lands now. Um, all right. So we are going to take this, even though I'm not playing white, just so that I have that other color 
because I do have, um, let's see, the only thing I have that really wants it is this, but I mean, eh, you know what, we'll take that one out. We'll just do the colors that I'm going to want. So, yeah. Even though these are technically on color, let's see, so we're running two, three, four, five, six, seven. So we got seven there. Um, let's go ahead and add lambs. It added three, three and four. Um, yeah, I think that's fine because I don't really need any more blue sources. I have one, two, three, four. So I have four blue sources and I only have two things that really won't blue. I think it's fine. We'll try it. We'll see what happens. So we're going to go in and do our first battle. Yeah, building on Arena is a little bit odd to go in and do the deck build. So we'll see how this goes. I'm so used to doing it with real cards and actually being able to lay them out in front of you. So I thought I'd try to do it a little different that time. Um, this isn't like the greatest, but I do have my three main colors. Um, and then if I start drawing lands, I can always have this to just to draw a couple more cards. And then I have this to make another color of mana and it has death touch. So it works good with this card. Um, sure, we'll keep it. I don't have any of the duels in my hand. All right, well, we did drew a duel as soon as I said that. So we'll play the duel. And see, I have a feeling there's going to be a lot of games where it's play a duel, go, play a duel, go. So I have a feeling that's going to be what happens a lot of games. So we're going to pass. We have Lightning Strike available. And I could always do that. Oh, did he miss a thing? He missed a land drop. So the question is, do I want to do this now? I think I do, and I'm going to discard a mountain to draw two cards. Okay, nice. I got that. And then I drop a turn. So let's play the swamp, and then we'll play this chick out. So he missed the land drop. Is he, is he going to lightning strike it? No, but it uh, was a way to kill it. So I totally expected that. Okay, so this next turn, I think I play. Well, that's kind of annoying. All right, so, um, I think I play this. And then I think I do. I get squee. How, how does squee come back? Um, let's see, you may cast Squee from your graveyard by paying four and exiling four other cards. Okay, so he only has one card in his graveyard right now. So I think I'll just go ahead and bite Squee so that he doesn't have a way to pump it and keep Squee alive. I think that's what we do. And this guy lets me scry when creatures I control die. I still have Lightning Strike available, so. He's going to get to scry too. So if he leaves stuff on top, it's probably going to be lands. Because it looks like he's not hitting land drops. So he left both on top. So it's probably a land and maybe something else. But at least a land. Um, and I have enough for Lord Wind Grace now. But the question is, do I play him without the ability to activate him? Um... I think I do. I think I just get him out there. We just jam him out there. So I get to take this land, put it on the battlefield, um, and I choose not to attack. So now we have a, uh, abilities available on him. So I can discard a land and draw a card. Um, discard a land, gain three life, discard a land, and he gains menace and indestructible. It'd be really nice if I had a way to get lands back okay well i'm just gonna kill that next turn so all right so we're gonna play let's see do i even bother playing lands if i want to okay you know we're gonna start out just do it to any type 
Uh, this damage to each opponent. Okay, so we want to kill the Shivan Devastator. I bet that's one of the cards he left on top. Um, and then the question is, do I play this land? I don't think I do. I have five lands out. Let's see. So whenever he enters the battlefield or attacks, I can play a land from a graveyard. Okay, so does he have any? He doesn't have any lands on graveyard. So, okay, so I tell you what, we're going to attack. So, we're going to see if he blocks. Because I have the activation to be able to discard this and become indestructible. Okay, so, yes, that happens. And we are going to activate discarding a card, giving him indestructible. Alright. So, next turn I can attack and get a land back from the graveyard to the battlefield. Well, he's got that, so I might not be able to attack with that. Um, let's see, can I kick this? I actually can kick this. So we're going to kick this. It's going to give my creatures menace. So now all my creatures have menace. He has one creature, so he cannot block, and I get to bring this land back to the battlefield. So that's pretty cool. I like that. That worked out really good with this guy. I like the interaction of being able to discard cards and then bring the cards back. And if by any chance they throw a card in their graveyard, I can still bring cards back. from. The, I can bring lands from their battle, from their graveyard back. Um, okay, I'll tell you what. We are going to... Yeah, we're just going to attack. That's fine. Let him wonder if we have something. So he's going to block like that, and he's just going to take Lord of Wind Grace. Um, I'll tell you what, let's flash this in. We'll destroy that and keep the 3-3. Three, three. Okay, so yeah, we'll keep that. And I think we're just going to end turn because I think I want to do the discard a card and draw a card. Just hard lay to draw a card is what I want to do. Because I can cast. I can, okay, so if I do discard this to draw this, and then I have draw for turn. And if I kick it, I will then have four cards in hand which would do four damage to that, and I can attack the lethal if he doesn't play another creature this turn. Let's see. Okay, so he could play Squee from his graveyard. Okay, he plays that. So he's got another one of those. Okay, and it's two opponent. So I'm taking three. Does he attack? Let's see, so I have one. So swamp, mountain, forest, island. So I have four. So this would do four. All right, so we're going to go ahead and do this. We're going to draw the card. Discarding this. Okay, so I think what I do to start out is this, this is instant. So I think what I do to start out is attack with everything. And we'll see what he does. Because I can give my Lord of Wind Grace indestructible right now if I want to. So we'll see how he blocks. Okay, so that's fine. I think what I do... Let's see, is this to any target? Creature or Planeswalker is all it does. Okay, so. Um, one, two, three. So I have six mana. So if I kick this, 
I kill that. But then I can't discard a card to make him indestructible. Uh, you know what? We're just going to discard a card to make him indestructible. Okay. We'll discard that land to give him indestructible. And then we're going to do this without the kicker to do two damage to that and finish it off. And then next turn, I can just play this and kill him. Even if he has a way to kill my Lord of Windgrace, I can just play this and he takes four damage. I think that was the best way to go about it. It's a good thing I was drawing lands because I was able to make him indestructible and just keep attacking with him. Um, that's that's the good thing about this guy is like it's like I drew a land. Okay, that's fine. I'll draw lands. Let's just draw all the lands out of my deck. Yeah, that's pretty decent. All right, so he's gonna cast Squeed from his graveyard. Yeah, he's gonna cast that. He thinks he has a way to survive, but he thinks he is going to die. There we go. All right, so. We got there in the first game. That worked out pretty good. It seemed like a fairly slow start in my hand, but um, we drew into some good things. And I think this format is going to be a little slower because most people are going to be playing three or four colors or five. Um, I think most decks are going to be three colors. If I run up against a deck that's just like, just, just Boros, that might be a little ridiculous. But yeah, the Lord of Wind Grace is really good. Um... All right, so we have ways to make all three of our main colors. If I can find a way to make blue, I can do this and draw uh, and anticipate. So I think I keep this. I only have three mana, but I have a essentially a burn spell, a, a fight spell. I have a creature I can play, which I would prefer to play with the kicker. But I think it's keepable. So our first two turns are probably going to be play a land, say go, play a land, say go. Because I am i don't want to play her on turn two. If, you know, more than likely. So more than likely I'm going to play one of these, then play this. And then if I still haven't found a blue source, I might play her on turn three. If I don't have another creature at that point to play. But I'll have access to play any of my main creatures um, the, there are only one, two drop that I could draw that I wouldn't be able to play with the lands I have currently. So yeah, so we'll play this and then we'll play this and then turn three, we'll play this chick, which if she survives, will give me the ability to do this kicks next the turn four. So that seems like a good way to go about this. All right. So he's got like a whole little thing going here. Yeah, we're going to want to kill that. So I think instead of playing this chick, we are going to go ahead and do this to kill this. Because that will get out of hand. And we don't want to have to deal with that. Yeah, so it only gets to move one counter right now. The bigger it gets, the more counters it gets to move. And let's just not deal with that. Because if he keeps casting spells and putting counters on it, then he gets to just distribute counters around. And, like, no, we're, we're not dealing with that. Alright. So, do I, question is, do I play this now? Or do I play the enlist guy? Um, if I play the enlist guy, I have a 3-4 that can block... He's got a first strike creature that he can give plus one, plus one. Um, let's see. I think I'll play the Death Touch creature. Yeah, so he'd have to tap this to turn one of his creatures into a 3-3. Three, three. So, yeah, we'll play the Death Touch creature and see what he does. 
So he's got three land types for domain right now. I currently have three land types for my domain. Um, and I will not block because this has first strike, right? Yep. So it does me no good to block that with this. I'm going to have to use a bite spell to get rid of this. Mm, okay, so that's the thing that if it makes tokens, makes extra tokens. Yeah. Ooh, do I play Lord of Wind Grace? It's tempting. It's very tempting. But I don't think I do play Lord of Wind Grace right now. I think what I do instead is play this. And then use the bite spell to get rid of the first strike creature. Because that creature is going to get out of hand. Let's see. So when it enters the battlefield, it under control gets. Okay, so whenever another creature enters the battlefield, you get a plus one plus zero. And he's going to tap both my creatures for one turn. That's annoying. Yeah, he's probably going to kill me here. Um, let's go ahead and play Lord of Wind Grace. Um, go next in turn. So. I at least have a way to block. Is this thing's power equal to the number of creatures? Yeah. So if he plays another creature, this becomes a 4-4. And I don't have a way to give it indestructible. I do have a way to gain 3 life. So that is a thing. If they do have like a way to remove or to win grace, I can in response gain 3 life, which will help. Okay, so they got Lord Darien. He gives other creatures plus one, plus one. That's annoying. All right. So the question is, does he attack here? Which I think he's priced into attacking. But I don't know if he wants to attack with this is the question. Does he just attack with these? Does he say, well, crap, that Lord of Grace is not a good thing. So... I mean, I think he's priced into attacking, but he didn't. Okay, so we're going to do the Lord of Wind Grace thing and gain three life. Let's discard land, gain three life. Um, and I have a land that I can make Lord of Wind Grace indestructible with. Um, or I could play this and kick it. Just kick it. Um... See, but if I do that, let's see. So currently, I have one, two, three, four, five, six. I currently have six mana. Um, if I play this, I'd have to use four of it. Mm. You know what? I think we're going to do it. We're going to kick it. Just kick it. See what we get. So we get a anticipate for the top three. Oh, see, this could be good. It will get, next turn, it would give all my creatures menace. And currently I have one, two, three, four. He has four. Um, which one would be better for me? You know what? I might actually just want to take the land. Yeah, I think I just want to take the land. Um, and then... I'm going to play this land this turn. So I have this land to be able to make him indestructible. Um, so next. Now I think I'll go ahead and attack for a wing race, actually. I get to put a land from my graveyard on the battlefield. And if they go to block, I get to make him indestructible and kill anything that they block him with. All right, we are going to... Pay the three to discard a card, make him indestructible. He's already attacking, so it doesn't matter that he's tapped. So now the question just becomes, do you take five? And he does. All right. And I have a couple of blockers for the way back. Like, this can kill a couple of his things. This could kill this thing. Like, this could kill this. This could kill this. So if he, he's not really priced into attacking right now anyway... And this just becomes a question of, do I have a land in hand? He's going to go ahead and attack. Because, I mean, this just gets smaller 
the more things I take off his board. Um, I think I just block this and trade those two out. Oh, that's right, he makes that bigger. But it doesn't give it bigger power. It just gives it bigger toughness. And it makes this bigger. Okay, so. Tell you what, I think we go ahead and we kick this. And we bounce this. Right, yeah. Um... And then I think we no attack. I don't think it's I don't think we're priced into attacking here. Yeah, I think we no attack. And let him wonder if we have a way to discard a land. Because now if he plays this, it's three. He has to pay five to do the ability. I need to find a way to get rid of her. Her making the extra token is a little annoying. Because we he has one card we don't know about. Hopefully it's like a land or something. So he's gonna play King Darien. So she goes up to a six six. So she's gonna have to be blocked if he attacks. And he didn't attack, okay. Um, I think I'm priced into playing this now, right? Yeah, I think I'm priced into just playing the Death Touch creature now. And then passing turn. Yeah, because I'm down to three life here. If I draw a land, then I actually want to draw a land, so... He's just passing. I tell you what, we'll play Phoenix Chick. Get her out there. She's flying, so. Let's see, and what does she do? Alright, so she doesn't do anything except for fly and attack. So we'll attack in for one. That's fine. But she's got haste. So if we can attack for one, he has no reach. So we're going to be able to ping away. All right, and we're going to hold this in hand to make him think we have another. And he's going to keep pumping her, but I have a Death Toucher now. So, actually, I have two Death Touchers, so we can take care of her. More one ones. Oh, my gosh. Um, you know, I think at this point I do this. I don't think this is worth dealing with right now. Let's get two cards, see if I get an indestructible, a way to make him indestructible anyway. I did, I got two lands, so that's nice. Okay, so, we should attack a Phoenix chick. Let's go with a Death by a Thousand Cuts. So now, he has more than enough attack to, like, kill me outright. But I can gain six life if I want to. Because I can, if he attacks out. Um, let's see. That's annoying. You suck, dude. That's annoying. He's going to attack out. I don't know, he's just going to attack those. Okay. Um, sure. Alright, so we will block here. We'll block here. Let's see, so I'd be taking 10. I can gain 6, which would take me to 9. So I have to block at least one more. Um, tell you what, let's... Yeah, let's block with that. I think I have to block one of these. I'm taking six, so we'll choose blockers. We'll discard a land to gain three life. Did 
discarded by gain three life. Yeah, it looks like we're probably going to lose this game. So he's at six, he's doing six. So I'll go back down to three. I'm only killing three of his creatures off. And he's going to kill my Lord of Wingrace. Yeah. I figured that was going to kill, wind up killing my Lord of Wingrace, but that's the only way that I didn't die from that attack this turn anyway. So, yeah, and then, then we're dead. So, all right. Yeah, he him being able to get that little, that just green-white go ride, making all those tokens was ridiculous. Yeah, if he hadn't been able to make like a token army, I think that would have been a, a little different game there. If I had been able to hold up a land to make my guy indestructible, that would have been different too. Um, we don't have a way to make green, but we currently don't need green. And we have this to be able to discard a land if we need to, to draw two cards. So I think we'll keep... We got Phoenix Chick for turn one. Just straight up go face with Phoenix Chick. And then we can play this on turn two. She can't block anyway, so. Which one is this? Menace, sacrifice creature, put a counter on each creature. You have. Wow, that's, that's stupid. I don't like that card. Um. Do I cast that? I don't think I do. Um, and I mean, it can't block, so I think we just go. We know he, the Phoenix Chick knows only war. Um, I don't think I cast this this turn. I think what I do instead is on his turn do this to draw two cards. And I'll discard this swamp. So I've got my two blacks. If I draw another land, I have this to kill that thing. It does kill, right? Yeah. And because it costs three or less, I can gain three life when I kill it. So. All right. He now has a reach creature to block my flying creature. So let's discard this swamp and draw two cards. All right. And we drew a land, but it's, yeah. That's fine. We can play this land and then we can kill him with this and save this for something else. All right. No attacks. Because he's just going to eat it. So I think the next turn I can play this. I guess I could have attacked with this. Okay, so he... All right. Um, okay, so we are going to attack. Um, four. I need the blue for this. Okay, we'll go ahead and play this and we'll play this as well. Can't play the kid here. If I draw another land, I can okay play him as 8 8, which would be nice. Okay, so he's going to flash that in. He's going to get rid of that, which is annoying. And I have no way to get rid of this enchantment. That's six mana. Did he have six? One, two, three, four, five. He only had five mana. How does that cost? Oh, it's one less for each domain. Yeah, gotcha. All right, so, you know, we'll block there. He's going to put the 1-1 one, one here, which is fine. It's going to make this guy cheaper because I get two creatures in my graveyard. If I draw a land, I can play a 5-5 five, five Death Touch. What does it do if it's kicked? Like a 1-1. One, one. Okay, I drew a land. So I think I play the 5-5 five, five Death Toucher. For a discounted price. Because he's normally, what, seven? Yeah. All right. Go block. 
If he's got a pump spell, he's got a pump spell. Unless it gives it first strike and pumps it. Doesn't have first strike, so it still dies. And I get to play an 8-8 eight eight next turn. He played the defender. Alright, and you put a land in your hand. Yeah. Alright, so we'll play this land and we will play my 8-8. Eight eight and say, how you doing? Because your 3-2 has enlists. This is, oh, that's an annoying card. But I do have an 8-8. Eight eight. And I also have this card. So we got rid of that. And I can play this to get rid of that. Alright, so let's go ahead and play the land. Um, yeah, and at this point, I think I play this. And pass. Is it battlefield? Just turn creature card from the graveyard, turn to the battlefield, mana value. So he only has three types. So let's see, one, two, three. Yeah, he only has three types. So he can only bring something back that has mana value three or less. So he can only bring one of these two back. Wait a second. He doesn't have five basic types. He has one, two, three. How did he put that in his hand when he only has three basic types? Is there something that gives you another basic type or something on here? What am I missing? When it enters the battlefield, if you cast it, choose a creature card from your grave, return that card to the battlefield, otherwise put it in your hand, I'm guessing. Yeah. Okay. So yeah. Okay. So you get to put it. In, you get to put one in your hand anyway. Um. Let's see. So if I play this, yeah. So we'll go ahead and play this, and then I have this to flash in and kill the Praetor again. What does it do when you? Okay. So you just make one ones. So it's not that bad. So let's see what he does now. This is a cash trigger, isn't it? Yeah. Okay, so I play the land. Does he attack? No. Alright, so we're going to go ahead and do this and get rid of that Praetor. Yeah. I think at this point we just pass, and we're going to, at this point I think I'm just going to hold lands. So if I get Solar Wind Grace, I can activate Solar Wind Grace as indestructible. Um, yeah, so we'll play this guy. So whenever one of my creatures dies, I can describe. So now if he kills one of my creatures, I get to scry. Okay, so if it was kicked, put a counter on target creature you control. Anything that puts a counter on is still not as big as my Morrow. Yeah, my Morrow still eats anything he, he swings with. Alright, so this could actually be kicked now. Yeah, we're going to kick this. And we are going to make a copy of Territorial Morrow. Or Territorial Morrow. Yep. That's pretty good. I like that. This is not a card, like, I don't really don't want to play this on turn three. This is the time to play it. It's like late game when you're like, oh, what's the best thing I have? Let's make a copy of that. So he has one, two, three, four, five, six, one, two, three, four, five, six, seven. I only have one more creature. We're kind of at a board stall a little bit. I'm at a lower life total. I think I'm better off holding lands in hand right now and hoping to draw Lord Windgrace. If I do attack with three creatures, I can always bring Phoenix Chick back as well. But right now, I'm not in a attack place, I think. Let's see. So, he started on two. So, now, 
target creature will get plus X plus X and trample. Okay. All right, so we're going to kick this. Throw this in kicked. Take the top three. And I hope I find Lord Wingrace. Did not, but I will take this because that will be good for. Do I do that this turn? Next? I think I do that next turn because he's probably going to give something trample and attack with something big. And then he'll have one less creature that he can attack with. Yeah. So I think I think I just don't attack this turn in turn. And I think I play this next turn, giving all my creatures menace, and then I can maybe get in. We'll have to see. I figure he's going to give this. Yeah. So it's now a 9-8 with Vigilance and Trample. Um, so I think I put my Death Touch creature in front of it. And the question is, do I put anything else in front of it? Because right now, he would be trampling 8 over. If he has a pump spell, then I'm screwed. But um, I think what I do is block with 2 creatures, just to kind of soak up a little damage. Because if he has a way to pump it... Mm, <clears throat> let's see yeah we're going to try that and see if he has a way to pump it then I might just be dead but okay so I'm at 3 but that's going to die so we got his biggest thing off the board I get 2 scry triggers so we'll scry that to the bottom um, we will keep bite down yes we will keep that alright so we are going to bite down we're going to have this deal damage to this. That's the biggest thing on this board, so we'll get rid of it. And we're going to cast this and give all my creatures menace. Move to combat. Attack with these two. I think I attack with this and do I enlist? Yeah, I think I enlist. Uh, let's see. So he has one, two, three, four, five. So he could only block two things. So if I attack all out, um, he would block these two, obviously, because those would be lethal. Um, let's see. Um, so he would be taking three, six, seven, eight, nine, ten, eleven. He'd only be taking eleven. Yeah, I think I just attack like this. And I enlist um, this, giving the plus three to it. And this comes back. Well, I have the option to bring it back. Do I have the mana? Yeah, I don't have two of it. Okay, and he's going to do killing something. So I get to scry. Uh, yeah, we'll keep that. Alright, so now he has to block, yeah, okay, so he takes eight, but he now only has two creatures he can attack with, and I have three blockers, and my blockers are all big enough that they can handle his attackers. Yeah, I think that was the best thing. It, I figured he had a way to kill something, but at that point, I think it wasn't worth it me going all out on my attack. Um, let's see, so he has one, two, three, three blockers. I have one, two, three, four, five, six, six attackers. Um, if he blocks the two biggest ones and then he blocks this one, he would be taking two, six, eight. Um, assuming he doesn't have some kind of way to do something on the backswing, I think we're going to go for it. We know only war. And we have the red man to bring Phoenix Chick, and she comes back attacking. So that's an extra two in the air. So he's going to cut down that. So I'll get the scry. Go to land on bottom. And I do have a creature to play. So he blocks there. He blocks there. He's got to block. I mean, I mean he's got to block the eight eights. You, you can't not block the eight eights. I mean, you just you, you have to block the eight eights. Or you're dead, right?
I don't know why he's not walking A to B. There's not a fog effect in this set, I don't think. Yeah, I was going to say, I mean, otherwise he's just dead. He goes to one here. I kill all his creatures. He goes to one. I get another scry trigger. Throw that land on the bottom. And then we'll play this linebreaker ball off. And then I think he's just dead. No matter what he does. Unless he has a board white. We'll just play this. Instead of attacking, we'll just play that. Alright, so we got that one. Okay. So we got there without Lord of Wind Grace. Yeah, being able to make a, top, a copy of Territory of Morrow was pretty cool, I have to say. That was that was definitely something that I that I enjoyed. Making a 8-8 eight, eight token. That was pretty cool. Yeah, and I think once I get like seven or eight lands on the battlefield, I think at that point I just start holding lands. So that if I draw Solo Wing Grace, I have lands to start discarding two Solo Wing Grace right away. Um, because he costs four to cast, and it's three to make him indestructible. So, it, yeah, once I hit like seven or eight lands um, on the battlefield, I think I start holding lands. So that when I do get him, I can um, do his stuff. Um I don't have a way to play this right now, but I, I can always play this on turn two. Um, I can play this on turn three. Yeah, I guess we'll keep it. We'll see what I draw, but we're obviously playing tap land first. Okay, so play a land, and then we'll just go ahead and get on board. I would like to be able to kick that. It's a lot of fun to kick this card, but... Same thing with this, being able to kick this card is just much better, but um, so we'll just go ahead and attack and see what he does. And we'll play this. And what does it do? Never becomes tapped. You gain one life and scry one. Okay, so that's the creature he just wants to enlist most of the time. Um, do I block? I don't think I block. Does he have a follow-up play? Yeah, he does. Okay. So, I think what I do here is just lightning strike this. And attack for five. Because I didn't draw a land. If I'd drawn a land, I'd probably just play this guy. I'd like to draw a black land. He's going to get to gain a life and cry. So, he left that on top. So, it's going to be something good. He missed a land drop this turn. Well, okay. So, he's just played a land. All right. I'm going to make three copies of one... All right, so we'll play this, which is going to give me my other color of mana. And then we're not going to attack this turn. All right, so he's going to attack with that. That's fine. Does he leave it on top or bottom? Bottom. All right, I'm going to go ahead and get this off the board. And I have this for my other colors of mana. Uh, that card's annoying. Alright, so I drew a land. I think I go ahead and just play this. Yeah. Let's go ahead and play this. It only does two damage right now, but... This is a blocker for this. So, assuming he doesn't cast any more ways to make tokens. Let's see. Ah, curiosity. That's a sorcery. Okay. I just wanted to make sure that this was a sorcery and not an instant. Because if that was an instant, that was going to be annoying. Because he could do that. He could attack and then do that, and that would just be stupid. So he's going to stun this, of course. Attack for five. No blocks. Okay. So I now have this. This and this as possibilities. Um, I think I put the big dumb guy out. So that I have another way to block things. Of course, I still can't block this with that because it's too big. But oh, that's annoying. 
You know what, buddy? You can bite me. I will go to two. That's fine. Um, yeah, we're going to cast. You know what? Cancel. I don't want to cast that. I think I'm just going to cast this. And I'll keep my Death Toucher back. So now I can Death Touch your Queen. And I have this to take that guy out. And I have a couple one ones that I can take out. So he could do one to me if he attacks all out right now. Although that's going to tap something down. Or no, gain control. What? What the? What the what? That's stupid. Yeah, I'm dead. Alright. That was stupid. He took control of my Death Touch creature. Alright, let's see. We are currently at two wins, two losses. Let's see if we can get a third win. Still didn't see Lord of Wind Grace. But Lord of Wind Grace was pretty good in those two that I got, so. Lord of Wind Grace is a pretty good card. Uh, we have ways to make all of our colors of mana, so we will keep this. And I think I am going to, since I'm on the play, we're gonna we're gonna go on and get on the offensive with the chick, and then we'll play this next turn. And we'll get on the offensive again. So it kept me from doing something for one turn, but this turn I played this land and then I played this guy. Or actually, you know, we're going to play this land and then we're going to play this because that thing will get out of hand. Because whenever you cast an instant sorcery, you put a counter on it. And if I don't kill it now, it could get out of reach for me to kill with lightning strike. So I think I just kill it right now is the correct thing to do there. And then this turn, I will play land, uh, pass turn, and then keep this guy up to potentially counter something or destroy something. So that's just a defender that can attack creatures. Uh, you know, we're just going to go ahead and attack. And the question is, do I want to keep this up or do I want to... Well, actually, I can't because I don't have a blue source that's not black. So I can't actually keep that up right now. So we'll just play this guy out. Oh, Jaya. Oh, Jaya. Oh, Jaya. Okay. So we play land. We know only war. And we attack Jaya. So this way he's pressing up blocking that one. That's fine. We will cast our Blind Breaker Palace, which has enlist, which will be enlisting this guy more than likely. Yeah, creature or plane work. So yeah. So if I draw a way to make uh if I draw like a black land, oh that's annoying. You're killing my big guy, dude. It's not cool. But I do get to scrap. Uh do I want to keep that? I think yes. I would like to have a black land, but I don't want to throw that on the bottom and then not draw a draw another land and it be a land that I don't actually want. So, all right. So we are going to no only war at Jaya. And then we're going to play this. And let's see. So I have one, two, three, four, five. Yeah, we're going to play a land now. So I get another monk. Okay, so minus one is looking at the top. Okay, so he now has this guy. Okay, so. I think I just cast my five out of that toucher. And say go. Phoenix chick cannot block, but he has a blocker for her now. One, two, three, four. So he's got four of those. Um, let's see. So. He 
He's going to tap that, yeah. There's her offense at eight. I don't think I can do anything there. All right, we're just going to play this. We'll play Abby Gleeple Spell Thief. If he's going to have to spend three mana every turn to tap my 5 5 down, that's fine. Let's see, and I don't have any pump spells in my deck. If I had a pump spell, I could pump and get a pump across the board. But yeah, he's just going to pass turn and he's going to tap my 5 5 down again. Go to combat, he's going to tap this down. So, um,. Make me no attack, and then we play this, and we do four to him. Yeah, because I have four basic types, so he's going to take four. Alright. So, if Jaya goes unchecked next turn, he can ultimate Jaya, which is not going to be good. Alright, so, I don't have two black sources. Ugh! So annoying. If I had two black sources, I could kill Jaya this turn. I think I just have to go after Jaya. We just have to go all out. Yeah, I think we just have to send them all at Jaya. Because I can't let her ultimate. If she ultimates out, uh, let's see, so he has one, two, he has six blockers. One, two, Three, four, five. I'm attacking with five things. He's got enough things to block with to keep me from killing Jaya. But, I mean, he only has one flying blocker, so I get to do one to her no matter what he does here. So she will get ticked down below eight. Yeah, so that's fine. That's fine. That's fine. Yeah, so she's going to take down below eight, and I'm going to clean his board off. Because he lost one of his blockers. Oh, and he has a kill spell. Ooh, we got tons of triggers. Okay, so. Okay, so we will take that action. Um, and I'm going to deal damage equal to... Hey, why did? Well, that's stupid. I don't want that. I want a black land. All right. Well, that would be a black land, but you know we're gonna keep it. Jai is gonna take down one, so. And he gets to prowess trigger all of his things. <laughs> Screw you, buddy. Alright. So Jaya did go down to seven, so she does not ultimate this turn. But he's got like a stupid army on board. Yeah, and I'm not gonna be able to kill Jaya. Yeah, if he attacks all out and then just has a spell. Yeah. Alright, you know, we're just going to concede. Because I'm not going to be able to kill Jaya. And Jaya is going to ultimate and it's going to be stupid. And I'm just going to die to Jaya. We're not going to bother with that. We'll just go ahead and end it back there. We'll accept defeat. Alright, so we won two games. Which, you know, not great. But, alright. Let's go to packs. Let's see what we got. So rares. We got... None of these are rares I'm super excited about. 
Uh, let's open this pack of almond kit that we got. Uh, yeah, nothing I'm super excited about there either. All right. All right, so that was my sealed event that I did, and it wasn't the best sealed event, but I think Lord of Grace is a really good card, and if I draw him, he's even better, but um, if I'd had a second black mana, that game would have went a little different, because I could have killed Jaya as soon as she hit the battlefield, but I don't know. Um... So hopefully you like that video. Um, I'm going to be playing some free releases this weekend, so I will have some promo codes that I will give away if anyone is interested. So come back and watch another video. I think I'm going to do a draft after this. So um, see you later.